Yo, yo, qué reales, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos sean todos ustedes a un especial de lujo eh, aquí en Telehit. Nos encontramos eh, en la capital de Inglaterra, en Londres, justo, justo a un lado de uno de los edificios más importantes de esta ciudad. Estoy hablando del Big Ben. Y bueno, ¿de qué se trata el especial? Pues estoy hablando de una banda... Eh, pues que le ido bastante bien, le fue muy bien con su primer material discográfico con Ho Hope and Fears, estoy hablando de King que tiene nuevo material discográfico que se llama Under the Iron Sea. Eh, no le cambien porque vamos a tener por ahí entrevistas, vamos a tener videos, vamos a tener todo lo relacionado con esta banda. Eh, y pues nosotros dando el rolecito aquí en Londres, así que no le cambies, carnal, no le cambies. Recuerden, recuerden que, que King tiene nuevo material discográfico, nuevo sencillo que se llama Is It Any Wonder. Y vamos a tener de eso y mucho más de esta banda, así que estamos en uno de los especiales de lujo aquí desde Londres. Estás en Telehit, no le cambies. Carnales, pues ahora sí ya nos encontramos eh, para platicar con los integrantes de la banda. Estamos aquí con Kim. Thank you very much for your time with this interview. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. So uh, the first question is, uh, what could it be like the biggest lesson that you had with Hope and Fears that you actually use it in the creation of Under the Iron Sea? One of the biggest things I think we we learned um, was just being out on the road and the experience of, of playing live. And I think the the kind of energy and the intensity of, of the live shows was something that really kind of developed um, over the course of, of touring once we'd released Hopes and Fears. So with the, the, with, the, with the new record, I think we wanted to make sure that we captured that kind of performance and intensity in the, in the recording. So there was much more focus on that as, a, as opposed to trying to make the record kind of more pop. We wanted to make it more kind of raw and exciting and, and live, I suppose. So, um, you know, just we did loads of different things, but From a singing point of view, every, every kind of vocal that I sang, um, I'd sing it in the in the control room as opposed to in a kind of little vocal booth, um, just so that you know it would be a performance to the people who were in the room. Um, and I think that kind of helped to to, to get the best out of us and, and helped to give the al album a real kind of atmosphere. And and now uh, the first single is in any wonder. Uh, it's kind of a political song. Uh, why do you decide to do that song? Well, we just wanted to express a, a sense of um, kind of doubt and confusion that we, we, we were certainly feeling, the three of us, and um, we got a sense that our generation is feeling a sense of uh, kind of unease about um, the way we're being represented on, on the world stage, especially coming from Britain, um, you know, and I think a lot of people of our age are really... Um, you know, really scared and really confused about what what they're supposed to think about about the you know you know the way Britain is behaving in Iraq and about um, you know a million other issues that are kind of thrown in our faces every day and just trying to sift through all the sort of bullshit and make sense of it all is is something that is leaving us all feeling quite kind of dazed and, and that was what came out in the song. Y bueno, seguimos aquí con todos ustedes en este especial de King y ahora nos encontramos eh, justo a espaldas de lo que es conocido como el London Eye, que es una estructura que se decidió eh, realizar para recibir el año 2000. Es una especie como de rueda de la fortuna panorámica. Eh, no es como rueda de la fortuna, se tarda como una hora en dar toda la vuelta, pero es más bien, o sea, la gente se sube como que a esos este, cubículos para tener eh, una vista de toda la ciudad de Londres. También tenemos el, el County Hall, que, que es un edificio, pues, la neta, bastante, bastante chido, internacional. Y, y bueno, siguiendo con la plática acerca de Kim, pues, bueno, Kim estuvo de visita en la República Mexicana el año pasado. Le fue increíble eh, el hecho de llenar el Auditorio Nacional, eh, pues, no cualquiera lo hace, por ahí con la compañía de The Bravery, otra muy buena banda. Y, y qué bueno por Kim, esperemos que estén de visita próximamente de nueva cuenta en la República Mexicana, pero vamos a continuar con más. Eh, no le cambies, no le cambies, estamos en este especial de Kim aquí desde Londres en exclusiva para Telehit y ya me la estoy pasando increíble cara. la neta increíble Ay. and something that really caught my attention of the album is all the different sounds with the piano um, how do you came up with the idea of doing all the different sounds uh, I don't know really it's just sort of um, just the fun of experimenting for a start you know we'd been traveling all over the world and you know being the kind of geeks that we are we've been picking up all these gadgets all over the place lots of kind of vintage effect pedals and um, you know plugging those in to a piano is something no one's ever done before I don't think and um, 
the sounds that came out were just incredible and, and we wanted to find these powerful sounds that would express what the lyrics were saying um, rather than just being a kind of gentle backing track. We really wanted the, the piano and the, the, all the sounds in the album to really kind of say something. Um, so, you know, that was what we were trying to do. No, oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, I think we, you know, we feel quite sort of excited and quite proud of, of that discovery and um, it reminds me of, uh, of the time, we, one of the first times we met U2 um, when we were touring with them in America. We, we uh, were backstage and talking to, to the edge. I think we'd had a few drinks and uh, they, they've used the same piano that we use um, oh, really? on stage for, for, for a long time and um, obviously they don't use it that much. So we were saying to the edge, you know, well, you know, we use the same Yamaha piano as you guys, but, but we've been uh, sticking it through loads of uh, effects and vintage stuff. And the edge was like, fuck, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> so uh, we kind of feel quite proud that we've, we've done that. And it's, it is a kind of exciting new world for us. This is the name of the band in honor of a lady called Cherry Keen, right? That's correct. What can you tell us about that lady? Um, she was a friend of my mum's and we just all knew her when, she, when we were kids. And, um, she just, she just was this magical lady. She didn't really have any, she didn't have any children of her own. Um, so she kind of adopted, you know, all these kind of children in, sort of, in spirit anyway. Um, you know, and she was just a kind of very warm, encouraging person um, with a very magical name. Cherry Keen is kind of not a very English name, you yeah. know, so it's a kind of odd thing. And I think it was something that always stuck with us. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great that, that she's kind of uh, lived longer than with, with, uh, with us using her name for the band. <laughs> and what did she say when you say, oh, I'm going to... Well, she's no longer with us, sadly. Oh, yeah. OK. And, and well, talking again about the album, uh, when you were preparing this new album, you almost break up uh, as a band, right? How hard was that time? Well, it was very hard. I think we, you know, we just lost the ability sort of to, to talk to each other about um, any of the problems that we had. And, um, you know, we were spent a lot of time on the road, obviously, and um, when you're in each other's pockets all the time, it, instead of it being kind of easy to talk about things, you kind of start to internalize them or sort of tuck them away. And um, I think we found it harder and harder to confront anything. And, and after a while, we just sort of um, ended up depressed and not happy with being in the band. And, um, but, more, but worse than that, I think, not happy with, you know, not feeling like we were really friends anymore, which I think is something that's um, really bound us together. Um, so it was a scary time and um, I think we're very lucky as people to have um, our music to kind of bind us back together and um, express all those really hard things through that. So um, that was what kind of got us through it. You know, we, we made our, our record and I think um, confronted a lot of the, the things that, that we felt through that. And, uh, and, you know, here we are, we're sort of back together and really excited about the next few months and, and when you have like a really successful first album uh, did you have like time to enjoy it actually all the success I don't think we ever made time to enjoy it which was a bit of a problem I think that was why we got into the situation that Tom yeah. was talking about we just didn't you know we had all these amazing things happening to us but we never really took a moment to sort of sit back and I don't know <laughs> you know, have a big party or just to, you know, say well done to each other effectively and because you're always sort of rushing on to the next thing and if, and if you don't ever sit back and enjoy things then you just start to go mad which is what happened. So no, we never really, um, we never really took the time to kind of take it all in. Yeah. 